All right. Well, I think they both went live at the same time. That's amazing. The mistake of exercising to burn calories. I like to say the title at the beginning. How do you feel about in movies when they say the title of the movie somewhere in the movie? Uh, do you like it? Are you pro saying the title? Or are you like, ah, oh, that feels forced. They fit it in and like, you know, you should get the fake <laughs> applause I during the movie if they say the title. I don't know if I've ever noticed that. Here's a fun fact about Megan. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't remember movies. Like, They said it in at uh, all. Where the Crawdads Sing. Because that's a line in the uh, book. I only yeah. remember because I read it in the book. And we just watched that movie. <laughs> So when I say she doesn't remember movies, like most of the time I can say, hey, remember this movie, whatever it is. I mean, it could be the most iconic, most classic movie of all time. And she still would be like, um, I don't know if I watched that or not. It's like we watched that together on our anniversary after having our first child. And there was a trip to the emergency room that took place and we finished watching it when we got home. And she'd be like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that didn't happen. Getting a sense that that irritates you. No, I just think it's funny. <laughs> so let's talk about the mistake of exercising to burn calories. Let's just dive in. All, All right, right, let's, let's do just it. Do it this time. All right. So sometimes, actually, you know what? <laughs> for real, this is for real. So we're talking about the mistake of exercising to burn calories, which is actually a very, very commonly held belief, and and really, it's a very common myth. And the one thing that we have put out is this free guide that is the five myths that you have to stop believing to lose weight and what to do instead. So we're gonna talk about this one particular myth of exercising to burn calories. Um, and, uh, and if you wanna know what the other four myths are, we would love to give you that free guide. Yeah. So I'm if my put, voice holds out here. <laughs> I'm gonna put the link to that guide in the comments. The link? The link. Yes. <laughs> Did I say something? Right? I don't know. It sounded like you said link. Oh, link. In the comments on Facebook and on, if you're on Instagram, you can just go to our profile and it's right there in our bio. So super easy. And uh, I'm going to add that right now. Okay. Do we get you some water real quick? Yeah, I'll be all right. Okay. So sometimes the work that you put into diet and exercise doesn't really seem to get the job done. And it's not a good feeling when the scale hasn't budged in a while and stubborn fat won't stop being stubborn. You still can't button your favorite jeans. Oh, I hate that feeling. Yeah, I think you're the one who added that in this in this particular list. Like, it's just so close. Like, it just should just go. <laughs> so a common reflex is to exercise more often so that you can burn more calories. Um, that doesn't work. That's a myth, like I said, and it's it's not that exercise literally won't help you burn any calories, but if that's the driving motivation behind your workouts, you're actually gonna end up doing more harm than good. So before we get into some of the details on that, um, let's just talk about whether the idea of like, is doing something that's easy, is it easier better? Because sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. For Just for example, <laughs> I. I can't imagine trying to do everything perfectly right with diet and exercise, like getting it all perfect. Even if I only followed the tips that I, that I personally see on Instagram, there are countless and a lot of times conflicting ideas about the most effective ways to lose weight. Mm -hmm. It is exhausting, it's confusing. And as a trainer, for me, it's easy to spot the things that are just marketing nonsense. Um, but for most people, it's a lot more difficult to yeah. kind of sort through that dumpster fire yeah. of misinformation that's out there. And a lot of the things... Can so, I add something to that? Yeah, for sure. Well, when I have my conversation with my clients, like, they always know, like, well, what should I do? Or, you know, what's, what should the goal here be? And we talk about, okay, if you were perfect 100%, this is what it would look like. And then we talk about, okay, if you were like 80%, this is what it would look like. And that always is a little bit more appealing to people because there's some flexibility in, in that 80% versus going 100% being perfect. And so finding that balance for you, I think is what we're gonna dive into. Well, so here's the point with what I was going on. I totally agree with that. A lot of the things um, are supposed to, a lot of things that are out there that say, here's what you're supposed to do and you're supposed to follow perfectly. They're actually, marketed in a way that's supposed to make weight loss easier, but really it just ends up complicating things. So a perfect example of this 
is any device that tracks how many calories you burn in a workout. Mm. So whether it be like the, the, a watch, the, yep, a fitness tracker. watch, yep, or it could just be like if you're hopping on a treadmill, yeah. it tells you how many calories you burn. Um, and the truth is, so I mean, sometimes they're just trying to sell a piece of exercise equipment or whatever, and they're saying, you know, here's what you can do then and track these calories. But, but the truth is the technology is not accurate. And the estimates that you're getting from that, no matter how new and perfect your watch is or the exercise equipment that you're on, the estimate's gonna be way off. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that means that if you try to use that information then to help you in any way from whether you're deciding um, whether to have a slice of cake or you're just deciding, oh, well, what type of exercise should I do? Cause I want to burn a bunch of calories. It's going to mess with your results mm -hmm. and you're going to have a more difficult time losing weight. Yeah. So and it's way off because it doesn't know how it doesn't know you. It doesn't know your body. It doesn't know the rest of your day. And that all affects like calorie burning, right? Well, there's, there's it's really complicated, complex. So like having an external machine telling you how much, you've burned is can cannot be even a good guess. There's a lot of reasons why. That's that's one of them is that it doesn't take certain things into account of your day. I, I don't even want to go into what all the reasons are, but but it's not accurate. It's just it's just not. <laughs> well another example is sorry, is is when your mom was playing piano for two hours, she was sitting and it counted like 5,000 steps. Right, sure. <laughs> so that's, I, I mean, there are, literally there are so many reasons why, and I'm, like I said, I'm not gonna get into it. The, but the point is if you're using it for that, then you can feel like, well, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all the right stuff, I'm still not losing weight. And it's like, well, okay, well this thing that's supposed to make it easier on you is actually making it harder and more confusing. So easier is really only better if it works. Calorie trackers do not work. But even if they did work, if, even if all of this stuff was actually 100% accurate, then exercising to burn calories would still be a mistake for another reason. So now we're gonna talk about the truth about exercise and calories. So there's a good chance that you do need to burn more calories if you wanna lose weight. So that's the case for pretty much everyone oh, yeah. who comes to us who's struggling with weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that if you use exercise to do it, you might not burn more calories at all, or at least not as many as, as you think. And that's because your body resists change. So for example, let's say you burn 400 calories working out. Your body is then going to do everything in its power to slow down and hang on to as many extra calories as it can to make up for that throughout the rest of the day. So in other words, a, a significant chunk of those 400 calories won't be anything extra on top of what you would have burned if you hadn't exercised. And the more intense your workout is, uh, the more your body's going to adapt to cancel out those burned calories later. So you work out really hard, you're gonna be exhausted and probably just gonna wanna sit on the couch. Like, and, and it, it may be even just subconscious. It might, you might not even feel it, but, but that's what's gonna happen. So um, that's just one reason why doing super tough workouts, by the way, isn't a really great idea. Um, there are other, uh, other reasons for that too. So we're not obviously not getting into every little, little thing here, but what I do want to do specifically is recommend a different strategy. Um, so a better way for you to actually burn calories without tracking it, without seeing specifically how many calories you've burned. So without stressing out about it. Yeah. Um, if you try to add a ton of exercise to your routine so that you burn more calories, you're going to have two problems. So this is important. So remember these two things. Okay, first one. So as we've already said, it's not going to be as effective as you'd want. That's the first problem. For so many reasons. Yeah, it's just not going to be effective. Number two is you're likely going to get sick of it uh, and, and quit or get hurt before you see any results because you're doing way, way more than you want or you're the, the workouts are way tougher than what you want and you're just gonna get tired of it. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, there is a simple alternative that solves both of those problems. Dun, 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 dun. Do you know what it is? Or a drum roll. I do. You wanna know say it? Having some... Walking. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> Walking. Oh. It actually doesn't literally have to be walking though. So it could be any type of low intensity activity. <laughs> so, you know, it could, you use your imagination. 
It could be mowing the lawn. It could be rearranging your living room. Walking, not riding. It could. Did I say riding? No, but you said mowing the lawn. I just wanted to be really clear with that. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not sitting on the lawnmower. Yeah. Walking, just yard work. Yeah. Strip twister is another one if we just want to go down the path that you started <laughs> laying out for us. <laughs> I know, I can't stop thinking about it now. What? <laughs> Walking just happens to be a method that most people find really easy to fit into their day. So on a, on a regular basis. But the point is, it's, it's got to be an undemanding activity um, because going back to those two problems that we said. So it's problem one is that it's not going to be effective. Well, this undemanding type of activity like walking is not going to cause your body to react and adapt as strongly. So it actually will be more effective. And you can do it as often as you'd like. Yeah. Barring ridiculous extremes, like we're not saying go walk from the second you wake up till the second you Or like back. Disneyland level walking. Every single day. Yeah. Right. Sure. But you can do it a lot. You can do quite a bit of it and it's not going to take a toll on your overall well-being, which means that the, that second problem of either getting sick of it and quitting or getting hurt is less likely to happen. So in fact, it's going to help you feel better. You're not going to get sick of it and get hurt. It's actually, it can mm -hmm. be a method even of recovery. So it should be something that helps you feel better in the long run. That particular combination of benefits means that the calories that you burn while doing it are going to add up more throughout Let the day. Let me just add something real quick. Yep. Because we're talking about helping, helping you feel better. That is one of the number one things that I have my clients do who want to have more energy. Is walk. It's just to get up and move and walk mm. more regularly throughout the day. That yeah. can help in, in a lot of situations. For sure. So, okay. Well, okay. And so, and in case anyone has misunderstood what we're saying here, I'm not saying that exercise is the enemy. <laughs> it's still a very important part of healthy weight loss. Um, it only becomes, it's only when you constantly view it as a means to burn calories that it actually becomes a problem. So, Every time you have some kind of treat, you think about how, okay, well, how much exercise am I going to have to do to burn mm. this off? Like you have to earn the treats that you have. That is not a good, healthy way to live. Exercise should actually be a source of freedom. It can help you tone up and give you confidence in your body. It can give you energy, like what you were just talking about, so that you're not drained, so that you've got more quality time with your family because you're not exhausted at the end yeah. of the day. Um, it even contributes to helping you stay full on a diet. Uh, it can help regulate really your appetite, mm -hmm. it, which makes weight loss more achievable. It will also burn some calories. So, so there's that. There it's is not a benefit the sole to it. Reason. Yeah, and it, it really just doesn't matter exactly how much. That's just not something you need to know or be worried about. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can really know, and it doesn't matter. So as long as you're losing weight at a decent rate, like you're, you're reaching your goal with that and you aren't having to starve yourself to do it, then you're on the right track and it really doesn't matter how many actual calories you burn while exercising. Now, if you aren't losing weight like you want, or if you feel like you have to eat like next to nothing to make any progress at all, then trying to find ways to burn more calories still might not be the solution. Um, there are still other, other things that you may have to work on. Um, and that's just another thing that we're not gonna, we're not gonna make this a hour long video for you to have to, to figure that out. But what I will say is go back to that guide that we mentioned at the beginning um, that talks about five, the five myths, mm -hmm. really super common myths that you have to stop believing if you wanna lose weight. And that's gonna go over a lot of the things. And if you didn't hear us say that, the link is in the comments on Facebook, Instagram, it's in our bio. So that's where you can find it. Not only will it tell you the myths, it's gonna tell you what to do instead. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna give you some of the more specific uh, details, ideas that we didn't go into here yeah. just for the sake of time. Yeah. But I definitely, uh, it's free. You just have to download it and uh, um, it's yours. It has it even has a little guide at the end to kind of figure out where to start. Yeah. Than what you could, what might be the best first step for you. And it's pretty. It's pretty because she designed it, <laughs> which is it's true. She, you're actually good at that. Thanks. Yeah. I like doing that. Good. So, okay. what do you say we end this video and find some ways to burn some calories, babe? It's <laughs> totally bad <red> time <laughs> for me. Oh. Or we can watch a movie that I won't remember. That'd be fun too. <laughs> All right.
Well, Thanks for watching. Wrap it up.